so today I'm going to be reading Dragon Hoops. So let's get started. Chapter 2, Ivan and Paris. Am I going to really spend the next few years of my life working about a graphic novel about basketball? You have to know your past if you want to create a future, Yang. In November 1891, at the International Training School of the Young, young Men's Christian Association, YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts, a 30-year-old physical education teacher named James Nasmith changed the world. At the time, though, he just wanted to get through the semester in one piece. Mr. Nasmith, give me a minute, will you? Dr. Gulick, I know you're upset about your new assignment. The class has a reputation of being the most incorrigible in the, the institution. The two instructors have already tried to engage them. Both quit. I'll believe that I'll do much better. I'll take the class in, Mr. Nasmith. I want uh, to see what you can do with it. The students in uh, James Nasmith's uh, new class were all grown men. It was winter, so physical, and so physical education had to be indoors. In the, the 1800s, indoor exercise usually meant cal, cal, calamedics. And if uh, there was one thing that grown um, men in the 1800s uh, wouldn't stand here for, it was a cal, hammocks. Step. At first, that Smith uh, tried adapting his students' favorite uh, outdoor sports to the indoors. Football, hardwood uh, floors, not ideal for tackling lacrosse. Not enough room indoors for bulky equipment. Soccer, crash. None of them worked out. Now Smith needed something new, an entirely new sport. There couldn't be any tackling or bulky equipment. That was much. What that much was obvious. Even having a goal was a problem. To score, the launch, the ball had be had to be launched at incredible speeds, which inevitably led to broken windows. Instead of being upright. The goal was on its side. Then the ball wouldn't be launched. It would, it would be locked. It would follow a nice gentle arc through the air. No more broken windows. That's it. The next morning, he asked the superintendent of the school building for two boxes, each big enough to hold a soccer ball. Um, all out of boxes were... Will these uh, peach baskets do? Perfect. He nailed the baskets at the gym's lower railing, one at each end. Then he spent an hour writing out the, his new game's 13's rules. Good morning, class. I have a surprise for you. I invented a brand new game. Uh, I think I'd rather do Callus the Clinics. And Nazmith's uh, students uh, listened patiently as he explained his game. I call it basketball. In the beginning, basketball was two words, not one. Then they gave it a try. That first the game was very different from ba basketball as we know it today. There was no dribbling, only passing. The players kept re forgetting the rules. No tackling, I said. Nobody really uh, knew how to shoot. Kadunk. Woo, woo. We want to give it another go. All right, then. I guess I have to go get the ladder. Despite that awkward start, by the end of the period, time to head to your next class, gentlemen. Just ten more minutes. James and Asmith knew he created something special. The sport developed quickly after that. In 18... Uh, Ninety-four, a bicycle company ma manufactured the first specialized basketball. In the 1898, iron hoops or cords a net with cord nets replaced the peach baskets. In 1896, dribbling was first used in competition. Eventually, five players became standard, and they solidified into five positions. So it proved enormously popular at 
YMCA's around the, the world early on. Basketball had a hard time competing for for crowds with the more established sports. Baseball, football, basketball. At least my mom came to watch. Hey, I thought this uh, was supposed to be a football match. But eventually, because it was required a little equipment and no grass, the game was embraced with ur in urban areas like New York City, Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, and Oakland. The city of Oakland, California is home to an impressive number of basketball greats. Gary Payton, Bill Russell, J Jason Kidd, Damon Damon. A and a little large. Basketball is part of uh, Oakland's history. It's it, it's in Oakland's blood. I've lived lived in the city for almost a decade though, and to be honest, I've never really noticed. Ivan and Rabin and Paris and Austin are the stars of Lou's teams. Many in Oakland see them as the latest in cities in the city's long legacy of elite players. Paris, Ivan, say hello to Mr. Yang. Hi, how you doing? Hello. I haven't had any either of them in class, so I have no idea who they are. Paris here is the best point guard in the, the Bay Area, maybe the whole West Coast. And Ivan, Ivan is the best male basketball player in school history. Can we sit down at some point? I'd love to hear how you got how about how you guys got to where you are. Sure. Maybe after practice one of these days? Yeah, okay, pa pa. Demographically, Ivan and Paris check off a lot of the same back boxes. As people and players, though, they couldn't be more different. Ivan is one of the tallest members of the team. Paris is the shortest. Ivan is polite, soft-spoken, and somewhat shy. I don't let the alkaloids get to my head. I haven't done anything yet. This is remarkable when he is considering all the attention he gets. At the end of the last season, ESPN ranked him as the number one recruit of his class. Paris, on the other hand, is decidedly not shy. The first time I sit down with him, he tells me, I feel like I can play anybody in the country and be better than them. Paris is the ultimate alpha male, dominant. Reminds me, reminds me of me when I was his age. On the court, each has a style of play that seems the opposite of his personality. Soft-spoken, Ivan becomes a monster. Monster blocks, deny. Monster rebounds, snatch. Monster dunks, slam. And dominant, aggressive Paris, he weaves through his opponents with the elegance of an acrobat. Nike sponsoring us, the team, so each of us has a free pair of customized shoes. Coach isn't going to let us, us wear them unless if we make it to the state, though. Over that, we got to wear the team shoes. Which one's better, Mr. Yang? Red or gold? I like red. Do you even understand sand who... 24. Yeah, the red is tight. What do you think, Ivy? Red's pretty tight. Hey, Ivan, do you have uh, t some time for an interview? Not today. I've got a lot of studying to do. Okay, no problem. Ivan and Paris uh, played together at Montera, the public middle school down the road. That's where they become... That's where they became best friends. They both decided to come to Bishop Odude High School. Ivan talks about it in the Sports Star of Tomorrow video that I find on YouTube. It was a big transition going to going from public school to private school. When I got when I first got here, I just wasn't ready. Step step, Coach Olu was always on me, but I slowly learned to get in there and knock out my homework. In the same YouTube video, Luke says something he told me in person. Growing up in the inner city, he knows where to go and where not to go. He's moved to a nicer neighborhood now, but when I took him home in, in his uh, freshman year, a couple of times we couldn't get to his block because the police had blocked him off.
So he's seen some things. What do you see? I always play with a chip on my shoulder. Where do you think that chip comes from? It just comes from uh, me being in Oakland. Oakland isn't the easiest city. A lot of bad things can happen. I want to ask him about the bad things. I can tell he doesn't want to get into it. Tell me about your friendship with Ivan. Ivan and me are uh, more than best friends now. We're like brothers. I want to make such ter such a terrible journalist journalist. When you watch the two of them on the court, you can tell how close they are. Papa, they're even perfected a play that have been used by many of basketball's great duels. Pass, grab, alley -oop. The first time I see them do it, whoa, young men in colorful uniforms performing a seemingly superhuman feats felt familiar. Sigh. What's wrong, honey? I finally sat down with Ivan today, and he wouldn't answer your questions. No, he answered them. He's a great kid, just like everybody says. It's just whatever I ask about to the, the more personal stuff, like how he grew up. You spent a more most of your childhood in uh, Oakland? Yeah. Paris uh, talked about uh, how Oakland isn't the easiest city. Have you experienced any of that? Yeah, a lot, actually. But my mom prefers me not to talk about it. She gets irritated. I mean, that mom line is can't is a canned answer, right? Paris is really vague about his childhood, too. But that I get that they wanted to stay positive, but... Well, when the, you said that those two have been getting attention from the media for years, making sense of that they know how to hand them, handle themselves. That's exactly it. They treat like they treat Lee, me like I'm the media. You are the media, honey. I guess. Look, you're not their coach. You never had any uh, had a, either of them in class. You're not even where they're from. Maybe at what you're asking isn't about any of your business. Yeah, you're probably right. But how am I supposed to do this book if I can't figure out the characters' backstories? There's one more moment when Ivan seems to let his car down. What's the hardest thing you've gone through as a player? I'd say getting hurt. I was out for a long, a long time in the middle of the last season. It's hard to watch everybody play, and I know you can make a difference. But I'd say it's between that... That and the, the state championship loss. Last season, Ivan, Paris, and their teams fought hard all a season long. They made it to the state championship to play underneath those bright lights. This is the Dragons' eighth trip to the state. Maybe this is the year they finally bring home that championship trophy. It won't be easy. Standing in their way are the matter... The monarchs, these are so, so, so legends have won the last three championships. Tonight, they're making it, looking to make it four in a row, just like a loser game in the 1988. Things started off well. Pap, slam, Ivan Rabs throws it down, and the Bishop Ola drew the Dragons jump out to an early lead. But the monarchs were just getting warmed up. Pa pa! Goodness gracious! Slam! A reverse one-handed jam by Stanley uh, Johnson, and that's why Mater D is on a three-title streak, folks. The Dragons gave it all, all that they had. It was enough. We can't let that happen again, Yang. We can't lose this year. We're big. We're talented. Now we're experienced, too. If we lose this year, it'll be on me. People say be it's because of me. One cold uh, October night, Lou gathered his assistant, coaches in his house, to put together a team ro roster, a supporting cast for their two stars. When it came uh, to building the team, Coach Phelps uh, followed a certain uh, practice. Prophecy. His ideal was uh, five seniors, five juniors, and five underclassmen. That way, you never have a rebuilding year. That night, the coaches ended up with a squad that looked very different from Coach Phelps' ideal. Fourteen players, two freshmen, two, two sophomore years. 
two juniors and eight seniors. Eight seniors. So what happens next year when you lose more than half of your team? Next year, haha, yeah. Tony, a uh, freaker zero assistant coach and new father. Next year, we are freed. And you can quote me on that. So this is the end of chapter two. I hope you enjoyed my video. Bye.